Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where John and I are going to be discussing some subject of medical importance with Dr. Liz Lister. Of human importance, right, Dr. Liz? That's right, absolutely. It's, it's, about, it's about people. It's about what we all go through in our health. Mm. And I now we know that you are a hormonal specialist. I don't know if that's the way to say it or not. Sure. But you specialize in, in uh, hormone therapy yes. um, for both men and women. And in the past, we've talked a lot about menopause. Um, and I remember you saying, like, rather offhandedly, something about you call it perimenopause. Now, I'm not sure why it would have a different name, why we'd all know it by this name, you'd know it by that name. What's the difference? And, and why is it important to call it, if that's the correct name? to call it by the name. Wonderful, I love that question. It's a very common question, actually. Most people are aware that menopause refers to when a woman is completely done with her reproductive life. Her ovaries have gone into full retirement, as I like to say. <laughs> or maybe she's had ovaries removed due to surgery, maybe with her uterus, maybe not. All right, so that puts a woman completely into menopause, no more period. That has its own big set of symptoms that we've talked about a lot. What's le what, what women and doctors are a lot less aware of, and I think that people in our audience either maybe remember going through this, the perimenopause, or they might even have adult kids going through these kinds of changes. And so, Average age of menopause in the United States is 51 years young. However, there's a decade or more that leads up to that. And that's what we call perimenopause. Peri, P-E-R-I, like perimeter, like around the time of menopause. Um. Okay. Yes, exactly. But most people, and like I said, most doctors are not aware that it can be 10 or more years uh, before a woman has her period actually completely go away, where she can start to experience some hormones decline and some hormones really just get erratic. The production can go up, down, up, down before those ovaries head into retirement. Yeah. And but this, is like, this is like a prequel, a prequel to menopause where you have all the same uh hot flashes and all the changes that drive you crazy drive your spouse crazy so so, so you you have the opportunity to have, to have this wonderful uh, uh pre-menopause perimenopause for 10 years before it really hits home and you get the real stuff so that's not fun exactly exactly it's not very fun and to your point with these hormone fluctuations women can have symptoms that they and also their doctors don't recognize as related to underlying hormone imbalance. Okay, yeah. For example, sleep disruption, mood changes, irregular periods. Okay, And I cannot tell you how many women that I see whose doctor said, well, it's not your hormones. We're not going to check your hormones because you're still having your period. And that's, uh -huh. just a, that's such a disservice. Yeah, so I, I was going to say, would it be nice to know, a, as far in advance, when you're when you're menopause, if you will, or you're based on your perimenopause, when your menopause is really beginning, before it kicks in in full blown, uh, you know, uh, yeah. sweats and everything else, because then you can start modifying your uh, hormonal therapy long before you think you need it. That's right. Yeah, I love that. That's absolutely correct. Unfortunately, what happens a lot of time is that women are given what I call Band-Aid medicine. They're given Band-Aid treatments. So, for example, if she has having she's having trouble sleeping, instead of saying, oh, you're in your 40s or maybe you're even in your 30s, your progesterone is probably declining. OK, so we can use some natural bioidentical progesterone and help your sleep. Instead, she's given a sleeping pill. Mm. So it treats the symptom, but not the underlying cause. 
thing, yeah. like anti antidepressants, birth control pills. And I don't have anything against these medications. They all have their role in life to play. But again, you know, sometimes you need a Band-Aid. Yeah. But you ultimately want to see what's happening underneath. You want to fix what's going on underneath. And so yeah. that's why I'm here to, uh, with you, help raise awareness of these kinds of hormonal imbalances so that people can address the root underlying cause instead of just treating the symptom. Okay, right. so well, some really, could... there's some really good news here then uh, that we can deliver, I think, is that uh, when you see your regular uh, physician, and uh, particularly your, your woman and you're feeling, you say, it's really too early. I've heard my mom and girlfriends and who are in their 50s now and they're into menopause. I, I think I'm having some of the same kind of symptoms, but it can't be. I'm only 38 or 42. Is exactly. Don't, don't take no for an answer, okay? It could right. well be this. And then seeing somebody with some expertise in this like yourself can help you get through this without having an additional 10 miserable years before you right. finally get to menopause. Is that true? That's absolutely true. I call that the tail wagging the dog. Nowadays in healthcare, we each have to be the tail that wags the dog. Doctors are busy, they're short on time. They may not be aware of latest information. And so our audience is educating themselves and we're raising awareness of these kinds of underlying issues that can be addressed and people can feel better uh, with more, more natural interventions that go along with what our human bodies uh, are designed to do so that we can feel good. Well, John? Uh, yeah, I'm just making a note to myself because that's... This is important stuff. Right. Uh, Dr. Liz, I recall a number of conversations that we've had about menopause. And you've explained that uh, male menopause, of course, is a long, long process. Right. Um, and it, it takes a long time to our, our hormones to decline in men, mm -hmm. um, even into our 70s, possibly, uh, before we really start feeling it. And not that it hasn't been declining, but we don't really feel it. And that, by comparison, women's uh, menopause almost feels like you're going off a cliff. Uh, that it's it's relatively quick. You know, within a couple of years, all of a sudden, you, you've got all these symptoms. And, oh, my God, I must be in menopause. Mm. But this is interesting today because what you're saying is that menopause for women really is a longer process. We just don't, or you just don't feel it. That's right. And that there could be symptoms That's that right. you don't recognize or are misdiagnosed or minor mm -hmm. by comparison to what we think of as menopause. And this is, I think that's really important information because uh, not only can you start treating it earlier, but we can start understanding it better. I mean, as our bodies change, throughout life, if we're not aware of it, it's disadvantageous, I think. That is just beautifully put. I love that. That's exactly right. Well, thank you for this. This is great, great stuff. You're welcome. My pleasure. Perry menopause. Now, do I put a dash after the Perry or is it all one no, word? No, one word. All right. Yes. Even has its own diagnosis code now. Cool. Okay. The, the then, then it's, it, ha it has arrived. That's right, exactly. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.